Hello, I'm Gabby. Welcome to the Happier Life Project brought to you by free mental health and wellness app, My Possible Self, in partnership with the Priory Healthcare. Continuing with our series within the series, exploring romantic relationships and the areas that we can struggle with, today is a big one that affects pretty much everyone on the planet to some degree. Heartache, breakups and coping with separation. When it comes to our mental health, the loss of a loved one can hugely impact us. Our well-being can take a nosedive not just by the relationship ending, but also by the other changes it can lead to in your life, such as financial circumstances, living arrangements and friendship circles that may be affected. The end of a relationship can cause feelings of sadness, low self-esteem, anxiety and loneliness, and yes, that's normal to a point. While it's very healthy to mourn and process the loss of a person, it's also really important we don't slip into a space where we isolate ourselves and become consumed by depression and anxiety as the danger is this could trigger a mental health illness. Some people might experience these feelings I mentioned for a shorter amount of time, and for others, it can last a lot longer. Either way, it's the worst. And although scientists still debate over the why, it's agreed that heartache can cause physical pain as well as emotional pain. And we really need to take care of ourselves. Today's guest is a personal hero of mine. She has helped hundreds, if not thousands of mainly women navigate through the roller coaster of emotions and unpleasant situations that often come with the territory of a relationship ending. Adrian Everhart is a certified dating and relationship coach, feminine energy therapist, and author of the best-selling book, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man, and the ABC's program to get him back. I discovered Adrienne on YouTube. She has an abundance of great videos that offer guidance on how to move on from a breakup and call forth the person that you're meant to be with. Now, before we go into the conversation, please take note, as Adrian works with predominantly heterosexual women, we do naturally slip into referring to the ex as a man, but, if you're in a same-sex relationship or any other type of romantic relationship, however you identify, just switch the sex so it applies to you because the advice and guidance is still just as relevant and you're going to benefit greatly from this podcast episode, I promise. So, ready to find a healthier, happier you? Let's get started. Adrian, it is absolutely fantastic to have you on the Happier Life Project. Thank you so much for being here. I discovered you probably about a year ago on YouTube. I think like many people do, that's where they tend to first meet you. You're a feminine energy and relationship expert. Before we go any further, like I think especially in the UK, the term feminine energy is maybe not one that we would have come across so much and as most of our listeners are UK based I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on that please and can if you are working with feminine energy can you also be a feminist oh these are great questions <laughs> so I actually learned my most about feminine energy from English literature okay so I studied um yeah I studied 18th century 19th century English literature and just how uh, the roles that were assigned automatically to women transferred to society. Mm. And uh, when books were allowed and where women just automatically knew how to pack a suitcase or were better at home in the kitchen versus doing other things. So when it comes to gender roles and being a feminist in that women uh deserve equal rights, equal pay, equal treatment as men. I am all for this. The difference is understanding this natural polarity, understanding, allowing, expanding on the natural polarity that exists between men and women 
or mm -hmm. even without gender roles, let's take away uh, the sex. It's a polarity that we have with anyone who is more masculine energy. We can feel that energy mm -hmm. and the feminine energy. We also feel that. So if you're in your masculine energy, you might attract a feminine energy partner because just like the magnet, the poles of a magnet, when they're facing, you know, towards each other, um, they'll repel and, and in the right direction, they just attract one another. Mm -hmm. So there is this rhythm, this energy, this pulsing uh, sense that, that anyone and everyone has. It's just about aligning your energy with the type of energy you want in a partner. So feminine energy is about receiving it's about being relaxed, comfortable, flowing. Yeah. I really like to say feminine energy is like a cozy, comfortable chair that you can just lean back into. And then masculine energy is like sitting upright, stiff chair. And those are just the two differences. And then it's about being aware of those energies that you feel when you're around someone and in a relationship using those energies to have a healthier relationship, increase attraction, sensuality, and strengthen the overall relationship using those qualities. I wanted to start off with being that the Happier Life Project is part of a mental health and wellness app, us acknowledging that there can be a relationship between anxiety, depression, love, and dating. It's interlinked, like ending relationships can bring up feelings of sadness, low self-esteem and, and loneliness. And everybody has that to some degree, but then sometimes it can escalate and people can become quite poorly. Absolutely. A big one we face is when a relationship has ended. So the relationship's ended and you're, you're grieving the loss of that person. And you're going to go one of three ways you're either going to devote yourself to winning him back you're going to sit at home and not learn anything not get out in the real world and be depressed and sad and wallow or you're going to start dating again and get back out there and face those feelings so it's really a lot of feelings, mm. good and bad, that you'll be facing when a relationship ends and when you're desiring a relationship to begin. And you talked a little bit about how I focus on uh, reconnection after a breakup. Yes, there's a ton of anxiety. There's so much sadness. There's feeling abandoned. All of these feelings wake up inside of us. Mm -hmm. I never really put together the abandonment issues that I had until I had a person just suddenly walk away from me. And I call this moving up the tears in that you're facing emotions you otherwise would have not faced. You're facing feelings and you're experiencing sensations that this man has brought to you, man or woman mm -hmm. has brought to you that otherwise you wouldn't be experiencing in your life cycle. Mm. And isn't that the human experience to feel everything? And instead of shutting it down and avoiding it, which is the natural human way, right. <laughs> I encourage you to embrace it and learn from it. I say a man is either a messenger he's bringing you a message that you must learn or he's bringing you some sort of gift or reflection of yourself. And sometimes we see ourselves in a person who's abandoned us mm -hmm. or sometimes we get that message of what we do not want, mm -hmm. what we want to have in our lives. We can get that clarity. Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways with all the sadness heartbreak can bring and the anxiety of dating and embracing speaking to another person, a total stranger that you potentially want to get in the bed with one day, <laughs> because that's why we're dating. Right. I may, I'm, I'm talking to you and meeting you to see if you meet my criteria <laughs> for me to one day sleep with you. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. It can make a person really nervous, but it's about opening up and uh, addressing that and welcoming it and welcoming whatever might come your way so that I can handle it. Whatever comes my way, I can handle it mm -hmm. and I'm going to learn how to speak my boundaries. I'm going to 
learn what's really important for me to have in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to learn how to negotiate. So it's a great learning tool. These wonderful relationships we are blessed with. But yes, it, sometimes it can feel like a curse. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And you raise a really good point, I think, as well, sometimes the end of a relationship can certainly trigger these feelings, which you initially think, well, it's because of the breakup. But then I think sometimes it is deeper than that. And it's just it's awoken something in you, like maybe abandoned by a parent. Um, Maybe you have the attachment anxiety. And so, yeah, it all gets a bit muddled, doesn't it? And sort of sticky. And you're like, oh, I've got all these feelings and I don't really know what to do with them because usually we just don't show them. Right. A big part of that is understanding who is doing the speaking at that point. Mm. And I do a lot of inner child or ego states work where you identify the voice that's saying, oh, I know he walked out on me. I know we only made it nine months. I know that he was, you know, having these issues or behaving oddly or badly at times. And it really not my thing, but I love him and I want him back. Yeah. And identifying who is the voice that wants that person back. And so often, at least it was with me and many of my clients, it's this wounded part of ourselves that wants to fix our relationships. And if you look back, maybe, just maybe, you might see that someone else you love dearly walked away from you at some point in time. Mm -hmm. And your child wants to fix that. And so that's where men become our little projects. Mm -hmm. And there's some part of us that feels like if I can fix this with him, if I can win him back and bring back my happiness, you feel some sort of relief or resolve or that you've somehow completed a project in your life. And so it's really important to find out who's missing that partner. And I have a very popular video about the first question I ask all my clients when you ask yourself this one question, and that is to put that person in front of you exactly as they are the person who walked out on you, the person who said, I don't want to be with you anymore, the person who lied to you, the person who hurt you, and look at them as they are and ask yourself, your adult self, is this truly, truly my dream person? Is this really who I've, my entire life, this is who I want to grow old and die with? Mm. You know, is this it? This person who's treated me this way. So that's a way of activating your adult voice to get more grounded in reality. Whereas the inner child is often in the world of imagination. Mm, Such amazing stuff. I did go down a bit of a rabbit hole and I really want to share this with you because I would love to know what you think. And it's in terms of the science of depression and breakups. I thought this was really interesting. You might know this already. Our brain chemistry contributes to how we respond to breakups. And why they are so tough to overcome, according to a study in the Journal of Neurophysiology. The study found that love is a goal orientated motivational state rather than a specific emotion. In other words, relationships, romantic ones in particular, invoke an instinct necessary for human survival. Uh, This study also found that the feelings towards a former partner following a breakup trigger the same part of the brain that's activated when someone has a drug craving. These feelings about another person following romantic rejection, the study suggests, are a specific form of addiction. Uh, Enjoyable time spent with another person acts like a reward system to the brain. Emotionally positive social interactions cause people to crave and anticipate similar experiences. When a major source of happiness is removed from someone's life, they often struggle to see how they will replace that person and those moments. I just thought that was so fascinating. Absolutely. So insightful. And um, I always love hearing studies or research like this because really you could have asked any woman (laughs) and she could have told you this, you know, (laughs) Just go up to any woman. Yeah, this guy feels like a drug. Mm. When I'm with him, I feel like I'm on the top of the moon and and, and everything's just, you know, wonderful. And then when he's away from me, 
it's the end of my world. Yeah. I speak a lot, a lot about love and it feeling like addiction. Mm. And I even say that death is, is a bit easier to em- handle and, and accept than a breakup. Because the, the breakup itself, you'll be trying to replace that feeling that you had with that person instead of understanding that it is going to be a completely new feeling. Mm. And it will probably be better because the next person that you choose or find that you can open yourself to will bring qualities and different gifts to you than the man who walked away from you. Mm -hmm. So an important part of that with feminine energy is being open and receptive instead of masculine energy, which is on the outside, you need to appear to me the way that I need, I believe I need this to be. Mm -hmm. So when a man is often attracted to a woman, it is the exterior and a woman we're attracted to how a man makes us feel internally. Mm -hmm. I so often ask a woman, tell me about this man. Tell me about him. Oh, I don't know. He just made me feel so wonderful. And they often can't even exactly understand what feels so wonderful about him, but it's a feeling and it's very, it's it's true. So, so often we're chasing that feeling, be open to that feeling happening in your life. Even if you're currently married and you're having, you know, times of neutral energy with your partner or distance with your partner, practicing feminine energy means being open and receptive to their masculine energy, however it may appear or feel to you at first, Mm -hmm. being open and curious about it and seeing where it carries you, Mm -hmm. seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. There probably will be people listening to this that are going through something awful right now that are like, okay, I need the hacks. I need to feel better. Like, tell me something that's going to make me feel great tomorrow and make me, you know, like that movie um, with... Kate Winslet and uh, Jim Carrey is it eternal sunshine of a spotless mind where you can take a drug to forget the whole relationship ever happened (laughs) so yeah obviously we all know oh let me tell you I used to watch that movie (laughs) and be like when is the how can I just scrub my brain clean of that person (laughs) yeah exactly I love that movie. I just wanted to scrub my brain. I was like, how can I scrub my brain clean? Yeah. And isn't that what we all want? A way to scrub our brains and and free ourselves of someone. Yeah. Or some feeling. Because also we always go to the, not always, but why we find it so hard to let go is we reminisce about all the great times and we kind of sidestep the bad times and the painful times and the the reasons why. The thing came to an end. It might not be our decision. Maybe it was, but maybe we're still hurting either way. It's almost like we want to torture ourselves. Like we're not in enough pain as it is that we want to like think about the beautiful experiences we had with that person. So for anybody right now that is going through something like that, what's the first step, do you think, Adrian, to like just getting yourself up off the bathroom floor maybe? First off, I empathize and just send all my love Mm. to anyone who is experiencing that. Because when you have felt how deeply heartbreak can just shatter you, and it's just with you like a dark cloud hanging over your head, and every everything I would touch or see would remind me of that person I loved, Mm. and it's such a dark place. So my heart truly, truly goes out to you. And I will with absolute clarity and conviction tell you it is going to get better. It is going to get better. So I'll start off with kind of like the good news and the bad news. Okay. <laughs> the bad news is you are allowed to wallow. You are allowed to grieve. And I always call it, you're allowed to wallow in the ditch for as long as you want to. That's your choice. You have to decide about that. No one can tell you, hey, you know, come on, get out of this. It's up to you how long you wallow there. But as long as you're there, you are attractive to no one. Mm -hmm. No one is going to come along and go, oh my gosh, I love your energy. (laughs) I love where you're at right now. So, So understand, like, 
you can be there, but you're not attractive in that place. Yeah. And if you want to move on with your life, if you want to get your ex back, if you want to reconnect with your partner, this is going to have to start within. Now, the second part of that is understanding your brain as a problem solving machine. It's not an emotion solving machine. It's trying to solve an emotional problem, which it can't. So a really repetitive thing that you can do over and over and over again, even if it takes you 100 times to do a day, when you think of that person, tap your heart, all of the love you have in your heart for that person, place your hand and hold it over your heart. Feel that love for them. Tap your heart, send them that love. Mm -hmm. Send them all that beautiful love you have for them because grieving them and missing them, it doesn't help you and it doesn't help them. Mm -hmm. The other thing you can do is just touch your brain. Every time it thinks of that person, touch your brain and say, thank you. Thank you for reminding me of that person. Thank you for letting me know this is a problem. Thank you for letting me know this is a source of pain, but I'm the adult and I've got this. Mm. Because again, our brains are running on you know, something different. Our, we are not our brains. Our brains are trying to problem solve this. And we just want to speak to ourselves lovingly, uh, gently. I've got this. Thank you, though, for reminding me I've got this. Because it's going to take a while for your brain to figure out that losing this person is not a threat to your well-being. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because, again, it goes back to that that quote you had where your brain's identifying this person as necessary for you to be alive. Mm. And that's very much like childhood because the truth mm. is you are an adult. This person is not necessary for your survival. And so that fear and anxiety is often that child voice. So let it know. I love you. I hear you. I'm the adult. I've got this. Even if you don't feel like you've got it, you do. Yeah. We all know you do. Um, the next Thing, little bit of information. This has been a game changer for a lot of people is understanding you might be in love with potential, not what is, mm -hmm. not reality. Mm -hmm. So you may be in love and having beautiful memories and thoughts about what was with that person. And that person could have been, you know, in an upswing that day, they could have been on cloud nine that day with you. And that's what you remember. And there is something to that, having these highs and lows, I call it hitting tens and zeros. And when you're with a person that you're having tens and zeros and you're on a roller coaster, so to speak, something does happen to us. It's almost like, it's a little bit like animal training where you don't always want to reward your your pup when it does the trick. You can't always give it the reward. It will actually work harder if you don't give it the reward. So there is, going back to that addictive statement you made, mm -hmm. there is an addictive quality to this hot and cold, high and low yeah. relationship that gets us, you know, when our phone, we get a message from them, our brains just light up. Yeah. I, I often say a relationship that is healthy is a little bit boring because when your partner does message you, you're satisfied and you feel some happiness, but it's not like that massive dopamine hit yeah. of a relationship that has a lot of highs and lows. And so often you're just focused on the potential of having that high again, instead of the reality of what really was going on in that relationship. It's when you do connect with somebody in whatever shape or form, it's, I think it's hard not to get excited, especially if that doesn't come easy to you. I think the highs of getting a text from somebody that you're attracted to and that, you know, you're, you're dating, it's, yeah, it, but what you're saying makes total sense. Again, we just get pulled into this sadness, don't we? I think sometimes as well, we can be doing fine one day and then just, uh, something just pops into your head and then you just start thinking, what are they doing right now? Who are they with right now? And it's almost, again, like your brain is trying to remind you of this person when you're doing your best not to, you know, go there. Yeah, absolutely. Grief works very similarly in that 
you'll be going along and you're doing okay. And then something will remind you of them. And again, grief is just unique for all of us. How, how long we grieve, how long we will miss that person. Again, though, not to rain on the, you know, anyone's moment of remembering that person. Mm -hmm. It's valid that you're missing them. It's okay to understand that you're missing them and say to yourself, I am missing this person. Yet also remind yourself over and over again about what really was happening. Now, something, a phrase I get my clients to say is if he really loved me, if he really loved me, he would be here. Mm -hmm. And I want someone who really loves me. Mm -hmm. And you're reminding your brain, this beautiful machine over and over again, that if he really loved me, he would be here. And I want someone who really loves me. Yeah. Well, doesn't the mind not then go to what, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't he love me? Why am I not good enough for his love? Oh my gosh. That's the <laughs> biggest question I get asked is what is wrong with me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what is wrong with me? If a man is willing to walk away from lovely, amazing, beautiful you, there's something not right with him. It's just not matching up with your frequencies and your energies. Mm -hmm. So it's not that anything is ever wrong with you. It's that it's not a match. It's not an energetic match. And I don't want you to dim your light. I don't want you to change who you are to get someone to love you to match their energy. And this is where clarity is an important feminine energy value, because I want you to get very clear on not only what you want in a partner, but how it feels. Mm. The closer you can get to how this will feel for me. So you can take elements of the man that you love, the man who's not with you, take elements of him that felt so wonderful and warm to you, write them down, get very clear on what those characteristics were. And, you know, what about them felt good to you? What did they do for you? So you end up having this list. Um, and this is something I teach in the ABCs program, which is the absolute best chances um, to get him back, is that you get very specific about what it is you want in a partner. When you get very specific about what it is you feels good to you, mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the absence of that person, something changes in your energy around you. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how you'll actually begin to attract men and be open and receptive to men who have those qualities. I know that you're a big advocate for quantum dating as well. And do you think after heartbreak, and I know you've covered this quite a bit in t various talks and like I listen to your podcast as well in terms of you acknowledge that most of us think that's the last thing we want to do is get back on the saddle you know and see see other guys let alone multiple guys and of course it could be girls too it applies to all yeah absolutely get back on the saddle this is something you're like you just got to do it even if you're just not feeling it you've just got to do it you know, I, I used to feel that way the day that the artist broke up with me. And this was a man that, if if people are not familiar with my work, he, in terms, love-bombed me. It felt so wonderful, so amazing. Everything was so beautiful and great. And um, then he just came over one day to my house. I don't want to be in a relationship. Walked out the door. I never heard from him again. Mm. The end of all of my beautifulness, just gone just like that. And I went on a date that night. I somehow <sighs> pulled myself together and was able to find a guy and go on a date that very night. And how was the date? Looking back, it was exceptional. Oh, okay. in the moment, it felt horrible. Yeah, because no one feels like that person, we want that same feeling to come back to us and no one feels the same. Yeah. And we're looking for a replacement right? instead of something new. But a girlfriend of mine who works in finance, very successful, she said, I want you to go on five dates and I guarantee you one of these men is going to outshine this guy and you're never going to look back. The fifth date was the man who is now my husband. <laughs> mm. And it, it all started with this you know, guy who is a little bit younger than me, 
who was such a gentleman. And I remember the whole time I was on a date with him, I kept missing my ex, but also hoping my ex might see us. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a little revenge in there. But also, this guy was such a gentleman. He was such a gentleman. And just everything that my ex had not been, especially in the, the weeks following up to the breakup. Mm. So those five men, you may not appreciate them, but you're being open to love coming your way and you're practicing. Now, I was going to say in the beginning, I, I used to say, if a guy's broken up with you that day, get out there and do it. Now, I think it's really worth having about a month to grieve as much as you want mm. and just really grieve and process it and take a few steps back from that relationship. What did I learn? What did this person teach me? Try to find a little bit of, you know, something that you have learned and grown from this person and also grieve because again, the first two weeks after a breakup are just the worst time ever. Yeah. Your brain is just literally spinning with thoughts about this person. And while I think that you might go out and quantum date and you might very quickly be able to find someone, I don't want you to rush that work, the internal work and the external work of attracting a new person. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth taking a little time and processing what's happened. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of time and processing, I remember when I was going through a breakup that was particularly shattering and I was feeling really low one day. So I went to Google uh, to ask, how long does it take to get over an ex? Because I needed a time frame. I needed something to work with, like how long are these awful feelings going to last for? And what I found um, on various sites was mm -hmm. some places were saying you grieve for approximately 50% of the time you were in that relationship. Interesting. And the other site that I found said, on average, you started to feel better after two months. And I wonder if either of those checked out to you, Adrian. Well, I'll, I'll share something very personal with you about that. First off, I will tell you, I read a study about how painkillers even, you know, just over the counter painkillers actually help when you're going through um, the withdrawals of a relationship. So consult with your doctor, but see if some form of, of a pain medication doesn't help during that time. And I think they were just referring to things like, like ibuprofen. Yes. I don't want to give anyone medical advice, <laughs> but uh, just ibuprofen, um, you know, acetaminophen, things like this. Yeah, there's paracetamol for us in the UK. It will really help. And I, again, I don't think this is going to be a magic bullet that's going to fix anything. But not too long ago, a friend of mine had contact from my first husband. And it just really crushed me. And I was having a lot of emotional up and down. And Shortly after that, my husband and I, I ran into the artist, mm. you know, this man who had also crushed me. And I just found myself having all of these emotions and feeling like I could just, just cry my eyes out. So my answer is, in a lot of ways, I don't think we ever, just like losing someone in death, I don't think we ever really get over them. We feel better, our lives go on, but your life is permanently changed by that person. Mm. And so this friend of mine who my ex-husband had, they had had contact with, he said, uh, have you talked to a therapist about your feelings about him? And I asked my friend, I said, do you still miss your mother, his deceased mother? Do you still miss your father? Do you still miss pets that you've lost? Mm. Well, this was my husband for more than 10 years. So I'm still going to miss him. So don't let anyone judge you or accept their judgment when they believe you should be over a person. That is just a switch you turn off. Mm. Because I think a part of you will forever love them. There's some sort of connection. There's a feeling you'll have. It doesn't mean that you still can't go on with your life and get married. 
find someone else and have something incredibly beautiful. But I believe our lives are just forever changed by that person. Mm, that's a really good answer. You're making me think as well, one of my other questions for you was about when you've got mutual friends. So you've broken up with somebody and you're desperately trying to rebuild your life. But then you've got mutual friends and of course they want to hang out. They want to see you. I still want to stay friends, but also I don't want to hear casually dropped into conversation that the ex has been out at a party with them and they had an amazing time last weekend or, oh, did you know he's doing this now or that, you know? And so how do we navigate, you know, that aspect of it as well? Because do you be selfish and think I need to look after myself if I feel like this is going to make me not feel good then maybe I shouldn't see them until I'm feeling ready to well first off it, there's no such thing as being selfish when it comes to looking after yourself okay yeah. you know it, it it is never if it is it's the most positive term you can apply to being selfish which is I'm putting myself first I'm taking care of myself first and foremost you know, one of the things I teach you in feminine energy is something called feeling statements, which is finding what you feel in your body and being able to speak this. You're no longer stuffing down your feelings mm. to um, create an appearance that mm -hmm. you're okay with something. Yeah. So I would ask you, Gabby, how does it feel mm -hmm. when your friends bring up your ex? How does it feel if you could find just one or two words? How does it feel? not pleasant, kind of hollow, um, a bit sick. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, you Brits with your, your vocabulary. <laughs> it's magnificent. <laughs> so that's when you would just say, I feel. And then the third word will be the descriptive term of what you're feeling. So if you have a friend that's mentioned this person, you can just say, you know, I feel really, I feel hollow hearing about X mm. or I feel sick hearing about X and you don't owe them any explanation. Mm -hmm. They might say, why, why are you not over him? It's just how I feel. Mm. So the person who's experiencing a breakup and then the people around the person who experiences the breakup, they're like, shake it off. What's wrong with you? Mm. And one, maybe one or two people might be like, no, breakups feel horrible and they can identify with what you're feeling. They'll respect that. I don't really know what happens to people <laughs> who aren't in a breakup, who feel like they can totally give the person who's going through the breakup advice. Uh, and this is something I write about in the ABCs is that sometimes you do have to limit yourself around friends. Yeah. You have to have boundaries. I don't want to hear about this person. Yeah. Um, just like my friend who was telling me all about my ex-husband and telling me all this information about him. And I'm just, I'm falling apart on the inside. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with you. You just have a boundary where I just, I can't hear about that. It make, I feel some feeling and if that friend can't accept that boundary, I mean, my friend suggested I go into therapy and I asked him, I said, well, do you still miss your mom? Mm. You know, if I took out a photo book and was reminding you about your, your, your dear sweet mom, would you not miss her? Would you not maybe shed a tear or two? It's no difference. But while you're healing Gabby and you're in this sensitive place, you do have to have friends, let them know, like, I'm still in a raw place. It still triggers me. I feel like I'm doing great. And then I hear about him and I just feel hollow. I feel sick inside. And, you yeah. know, can can you respect my boundary? Mm -hmm. mm. There's nothing worse as well than um, when friends and loved ones, even with the best intentions, they're like, oh, you're, you deserve way better. He was out of your league. You know, it's, there's plenty more fish in the sea, all the cliches. And you're just like, I feel like an absolute <laughs> mess right now. And it's not really helping. Why did they do this to us? Yes, yes. <laughs> if you're still in love with the person, it is really, really hard, even though you recognize that the relationship wasn't perfect. In terms of accepting the person's no, and not trying to 
regain some control or maybe draw attention to yourself. It could be like, look at me on Instagram or it could be just happen to be going by their favourite coffee place or bar at a time you know they're going to be there. Is it just no contact? Like, how do we navigate through when we still just love them, you know? Absolutely. So this is what I teach in the ABCs. I am always astonished by the feedback I receive about this program that I created because I wanted to give a person the absolute best chances. So I had worked with so many women during heartbreak and myself, and I had been doing that for a couple of years, you know, several clients every day, you know, all these weeks out of the year. And I found some common trends that just kept happening over and over and over again with, with breakups. And so there's the breakup that happens itself. There's the grieving that you go through. And there's the nasty things that we can say to each other right after the breakup or when your partner says they wanna file for divorce or separation. And it's in that moment that we actually create a lot of the tension and animosity that keeps a couple apart long term. Mm. So there's no way that you could, you know, stumble into my information pre breakup. People find me after the breakup. So this is where you have the opportunity to hit the reset button. And this is about, on some level, reestablishing contact, but also after a certain amount of time, accepting their no and boldly moving on. So I created a program that worked on about a three month time period. And during that three month time period, I get you to quantum date. I get you to develop a rich, juicy, full life. I teach you about speaking boundaries with friends and family, mm -hmm. getting yourself clear, having clarity about what it is you truly desire in a partner. Mm -hmm. And then also understanding you may feel in love with someone, but you really just love them and you loved how they made you feel. Yeah. So love's a really complicated thing. But I think when we step back and we find out why, why this person felt so good to us, what about them felt so wonderful, you begin to identify that characteristic. You go a little deeper with yourself about do I really want this person back? So when it came with me to time with myself and the artist, after I did this work myself, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want this man back in my life. You know, he had certain qualities and certain issues and things like this that were not going to create a productive and loving and consistent relationship. So in that program, I give you all of these tools. And if you still want to give it as another try, I talk about letting the man miss you. So when you go through the breakup, four or five days later, the guy may begin to text you and say, hey, how are you? Just checking in on you. Or he never speaks to you again. And we don't know which one is going to happen. But I do know that if a, if a man starts reaching out to you after the breakup, you want to respond with warmth, but you also don't want to fall into that friendship trap. Mm -hmm. And if the man doesn't speak to you at all after breakup, he's not messaging you, he's not checking in on you and trying to see how you're doing. That's when you can do something like on social media, have a memory post. And this is after three months mm -hmm. post a memory post where you had an experience with him that felt good. You don't mention him. And I always tell everyone guys are looking at your social media. Even if they say they don't have social media, they find a way and you share this memory and that kind of reconnects you to. And then at some point you do what is I call the hell Mary pass, which is after that three months, if you have rebuilt yourself, if you've dated if you've really, truly done the work, you send that Hail Mary pass and you say it would feel so wonderful to have a cup of coffee or reconnect on some level, or I wanted to check in on you. You're seeing what might happen. 
And then if the man picks it up from there, because so often in three months, we really get our heads right. We really get clear Mm -hmm. on either the person we walked away from Mm -hmm. or the person we want to be with. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it just answers that niggle of what if, doesn't it? You're giving a a very short synopsis of your ABCs program. And I know what I think is really cool about it, Adrian, as well, is like, it's not just saying, okay, well, here are the tips to like give you the best chances of getting your ex back. It's like, this is the best chances of you getting you back. And that might draw the ex back in. And whether you choose to go down that route again or not is up to you. But it's like building you, which I, I do think is like really cool. And it's pretty lengthy videos, isn't it, that you, you get access to and, and homework and all, all of that stuff, which we'll talk more about how people can find you and all of your resources as we, we wrap things up. A couple more questions before we do. Can you ever finally end up friends with an ex? Do you think? I feel like if it's what you want, if it's if it's something that you feel comfortable with, if you find yourself in a solid relationship, but personally with my, with my husband, um, he had a very good relationship with his ex. And at some point early on, he said, Oh, she's, you know, we're going to go out and have lunch and, and, and catch up. And I, I felt my world spin. Mm. And he had a, an, another woman who he had, and dated just a couple of dates, but they decided to just be friends. And she would sometimes want to have lunch or hang out or, you know, do something. And I, I realized I cannot be in a relationship with a man who has female friends or is friends with his ex. It just doesn't work for me. Mm. So if you have a partner that who's okay with it and you are okay with it and you are severely lacking friendships, <laughs> By all means, be friend. But my thing is, you've got plenty of friends. Yeah. When you start making room in your life to have friendships with men who are exes, you start opening up this other part of you that's inviting a different type of man into your life. And I really encourage you, you tell the universe, I have enough friends. I don't also need my ex as a friend. I can be friendly. Mm -hmm. I can be cordial and polite. But I don't need him as a friend. I've got plenty of friends. Mm. How does that feel if you put that into your energy? Yeah. Yeah. It's you, you. Sometimes you think, well, I'm a nice person. I should be a nice person. I should be friendly if they do reach out and text and try and strike up the conversation. But it's probably not doing you any good at all because it's, again, probably triggering things of like longing. And yeah, that coping with that the physical separation of just touching them even and or waking up in the morning and the the first message that you receive or the last message before you go to bed all of that stuff really sucks so I guess as we kind of wrap things up would your I suppose main message be to really just do the work on creating as you like to say a rich juicy life well, yeah, you want to create a, a rich, juicy, full life and invite to, to you the type of relationship you want. So the relationship that ended needed to end. It was not working. Yeah. You do not want to be in a relationship with someone who's not feeling similarly and strongly about you. Mm-hmm. That's not the type of love you want to attract in your life. And it needed to end be happy that it ended, rejoice that it ended, because now you can invite the new relationship that you want that's going to meet your needs and feel wonderful Mm -hmm. and have all the qualities and have someone who truly, truly wants you and wants to be there with you, even if it means that other person getting their life together, coming to their senses and coming back to you, which happens. Mm -hmm. It happens quite a bit. So as long as you love them the way they were and you are longing and pining for the person that they were, the person who walked away from you, again, you're, it's not helping you and it's not helping them. Mm-hmm. So tap your heart, send them love, but get very clear about what I want in a partner. If he loved me, he would be here. Yeah. So you can 
send that message to the universe and most importantly, send that message to yourself and any man, men that are around you, that this is the type of relationship I want, mm. whether that means I want to be a wife or, you know, I want to have children or whatever it is, get very specific about how you want that relationship to feel. Before I met my first husband, I had created a, um, a manifesting list of all the things I wanted in a partner. And two of the things that I always encourage women to write is that if you want a partner who's hardworking, uh, uh, you know, makes a lot of money, be ready to not see him mm -hmm. as much. Yeah. He's going to be out of the house because he's going to be working. The other thing is put on your list, no addictions of any kind, mm. because you want to attract a healthy partner who's free of addictions. Get really clear about what it is you want and, and that you want a partner who wants to claim you, love you, protect you, make a wonderful life with you and focus on that. And things begin to change in your energy. It's always really interesting to me just as you will be meeting this wonderful new guy, that's when your ex will reach out to you. <laughs> he will feel it in your energy that you are truly, truly detaching from him. And that's usually when they reach out. Mm. If, if it's not at the end of the three month period for the Hail Mary pass and yeah. the ABCs. That's wild, isn't it? Um, last question, Adrian. <laughs> it's very wild. <laughs> I ask every guest <laughs> at the end of the episode to set us some homework based on the theme of what we've been um, discussing. So in this case, what is a simple, actionable first step that we can do when navigating through heartache, breakups and coping with separation that will help us on our quest to building a happier life? I really like the idea of eliminating things in your life, such as alcohol, um, unhealthy food, really give yourself a detox because you're in this place of pain and someone will say, oh, have a glass of wine. You'll feel better. And you might, but I believe you're just numbing and buffering your healing. Mm -hmm. Dive right in, go for it. Trust yourself, lean into that feeling. Even though it feels just terrible, it's resisting the feeling that makes it keep creeping up on us mm -hmm. and keep reminding us. So embrace that pain, get your head clear, get your energy right. Because if you've gone through a breakup so often, it's because there was something dysfunctional or unhealthy happening in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's really about regaining your identity and who you are and reestablishing your health. So as much as you can clean up your diet, limit alcohol, um, get exercise, do things that just promote your mental, emotional, spiritual, physical well-being as much as you possibly can. Dive into it, you know, knowing that you're going to be very resistant of doing this. It's you're going to want to lay around and mope. And I think there's a time for that. In fact, when the artist separated from me, I would I had to schedule time to grieve. My days were so busy. I had to actually set aside time where I would just cry and journal, scream, whatever I needed mm. to do to help get that pain out of my body. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's been yoga. The amount of pain and grief I can release during and after a session, it just, it still blows my mind, actually. I love how yoga, it's that's a great thing to be doing because the memory of you know, that pain or that person, it does get trapped in parts of our body. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's surprising. Um, when I went through my first really difficult breakup, I remember it was like the, the whole right side of my leg was numb for a while. Mm. And it, it was about getting that blood flowing and moving through that in different parts of our body. So yeah. I'm all for exploring anything that helps you feel better, that makes you, aligns you with your independent health, well-being, the things that you can control, what you're putting in your body, how you're moving your body. These are the things that will get you to feeling independent and strong and stable again. Because again, that person is not dependent on you surviving, mm -hmm. having that relationship with that person. 
you can survive and you will survive amazingly just on your own Mm, i love that adrian thank you so much and also community and finding people that empathize and sympathize that can be really wonderful and helpful too and you've got the i heart love academy which is a fantastic platform if you wouldn't mind taking that thread and running with it adrian being that it's your baby yeah so i heart love academy started off as a free group and it's transformed into a now paying group where I have weekly coaching, we have Q&A advice, we have a big group chat. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very affordable. It's a way that you can get coaching and a private community. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's private. It's off Facebook. You know, it's really a beautiful place to meet other women and share war stories. But also we have classes coaching, Q&A. There's a lot of fun things that go on there. It's very comforting that we're all, we're not alone in this because it feels very lonely when we are going through the tough times uh, in romantic relationships. But then, you know, you've got people from all over the world, different time zones, different countries, but yet we're all going through the same rubbish. (laughs) Yeah. It's just, it's really nice. Yeah. It's a very kind of, like you said, a safe, loving space. So that's the I Heart Love Academy. And then the ABCs is available. I think that's through your website, right? Mm -hmm. So my website is at everheartcoaching.com. So that's E-V-E-R, then heart, H-E-A-R-T, coaching.com. And you can learn about my I Heart Love Academy. You can learn about all my self-study programs. If you're going through breakup, ABCs to get him back. I have so many amazing testimonials about reuniting people with their ex. If it is meant to be, it happens. And if not, you will call forth the person that you want to have in your life. It's amazing how it happens. And I really believe the magic behind this program is that you transform your life from a place of wondering what if to actually taking steps to get yourself back Mm. and become very attractive in your feminine energy, Mm. not just on the outside, but your energetic presence and how this shifts and changes things with all, everyone around you, your, your parents, your friends, everyone, you get into a different type of alignment instead of being focused on, you know, a particular outcome, Mm -hmm. you get focused on how things feel. Your followers on YouTube, it's uh, huge and you've got so many brilliant videos and you just need to look at all the comments you get on there as well. And you are really resonating with people again from all all over the world. Um, Yeah. So thank you for doing what you're doing. You're just you're you're helping so many people. And thank you so much for for being on the Happier Life Project. It's been awesome, Adrian. I'm a big fan. (laughs) Thank you. I have loved being here and you've you've asked brilliant questions. I hope this will be a value and service to lots. Isn't she fantastic? Thank you again to Adrienne Everhart. I cannot recommend enough checking out her content, the YouTube videos, her podcast series. And then if you do choose to go deeper and go for one of her programs or join the iHeartLove Academy, you won't regret it. And that, my friends, concludes another episode of the Happier Life Project with me, Gabby Sanderson. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I've just got a couple more notes and they're important ones. So if you could stick around for just about another minute or so, that would be great. If you are suffering with your mental health, there is a crisis button on the My Possible Self app, which will signpost you to the correct information for immediate expert advice. Those of you who are listening on one of the podcast platforms, the My Possible Self app is completely free to download, so you don't need to worry about it costing you anything. And the last point, during the conversation, Adrian referred to a study where taking over-the-counter painkillers such as ibuprofen or paracetamol, and that's Tyranol if you're listening in the States, can help relieve some of the withdrawal symptoms of a relationship ending. After our chat, I looked into this research a bit further. The connection between physical and emotional pain is an ongoing topic of neuroscience research 
focused on how the brain manages pain signals. As it turns out, much of the same brain circuitry engaged in physical pain is also involved in feelings of emotional pain. Social pain in particular, emotional pain brought on by social rejection, seems to closely overlap with physical pain. This study though, does not conclusively prove that over-the-counter painkillers can reduce the severity of emotional pain caused by rejection. So, as Adrian advised, please do consult with your doctor. And also remember that what you are going through is a perfectly natural reaction to heartbreak. So try not to paper over the cracks if you can. And lastly, if you found this episode helpful, and I really hope you did, if you could take a couple of minutes to write us a quick review, that would be so much appreciated. And to find and follow us on social media, if you're not already there, we are at My Possible Self, and I've been at Radio Gabby. Please do take care, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.